I'm sorry, but you know, you know, <laughs> pass. I almost feel bad. I'm pass. <laughs> I'm sorry. You seem really nice though. We could chill. I still pass. <laughs> no, I pass. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? Poor Man Podcast back with another video. Give me the HBO special. That's the Help a Brother Out special. Hit the like and the subscribe button for more content. Today, I have to go ahead and give a warning before I do the show. If you are a short man that does not want to be triggered, I will leave the room now. If you are in red pill rage and you don't want to be triggered, I will leave the room now. Today's video is going to be more focused on black pill concepts. For people that don't know what that is, blue pill means that you think that you can win women over by being nice and with your personality. Red pill is people that believe that you can win women over with money and status, which you can, but black pill represents the people that believe that most men will never have money and most men will never have status. So largely speaking, the dating market is solely based on genetics. And when I say genetics, I mean, are you balding? Are you tall? Is your jawline strong? Are you symmetrically fit, right? These are all things that are genetic that you largely can't change. And people in the black pill niche believe that that is what the dating market is in 2021. By the way, shout out to Wheat Waffles. He makes great black pill content. I will leave a link to his channel in the description below. But what you guys are looking at right now is the percentage on the left. You're seeing the percentage of women that would accept. Okay. And at the bottom, you're seeing male height and inches. This is a woman's acceptance rate of potential male partners based on height, okay? This is solely height. It doesn't matter how good of a dad you might be. It doesn't matter your money. It doesn't take account for your status, all right? So keep those things in mind. At 5'4", a man will be rejected 90% of the time, okay? Look right here. You'll see 64 inches, and you'll correlate that to 10% of the time. Will he be accepted? He will only be accepted 10% of the time. So 90% of the time, he will be rejected solely based on his height. Now, when you go over to 5'8", I'm about 5'8", right? 5'7", five, 5'8", five, somewhere in here. My acceptance rate is going to be 50%. That doesn't take into account how good of a dad I'm going to be. It doesn't take into account how much money or status I have. Of course, guys with money and status will be in a better situation, but most guys will never achieve that. I'm sorry. That's why there is an average, because most guys are average, and most guys will probably continue to be average. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't work on yourself, but what I'm trying to do is paint a picture for you guys to show you just how much height does matter, unfortunately. So when you go over here, you look at 72 inches, that has the highest acceptance rate with almost 100% of women saying that they would date a guy that's 6'2". Uh, and when you go to about 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", you see that it tapers down a little bit because that's kind of a niche market. Some of those guys might be a little bit awkward shaped because of their extra height. Some women might think that means you're too lanky and, or, or whatever it may be. Uh, but it's never, even if you go all the way down to 8 feet tall it's never as bad as a man that is 5'4 you need more proof let's go although only 14 percent of men are six feet or taller 58 percent of all ceos are six foot and taller fortune 500 ceos so average height is six feet tall that's 2.5 inches taller than the average american man being six foot tall raises your annual income nearly one thousand dollars compared to men that are just two inches shorter Sexual attractiveness. Out of 720 couples, only one was comprised of a taller woman and a shorter man. Height is a masculine characteristic. Taller men might be seen as more dominant. Politics. Between the year 1904 and 1984, in the United States, out of all of the elected presidents, only two of them were shorter than the average height. Marriage. By the age of 33, shorter men are less likely to be married and have children. Taller men were more likely to have at least one biological child compared to shorter men. And for people that say this stuff is just a graph and this is not how it is in the real world. I read an article that actually says shorter guys make better long-term partners. I, well, statistics can say what they want. I, I mean, I have got to have a little woohoo, you know, in my life. You know what I mean? Like but thick have... and tall -ums. I need that. Oh, okay. Can you have woohoo shorter? Uh, no. 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 <laughs> As somebody that I would really date, but he's engaged now, and congratulations, Kevin Hart, my boy. Yes. I would yes. date him so. I would too. I would. I love oh, him. I would. For me, mm -hmm. I like looking up at a man or looking eye contact. Right. I don't think I should look down. Down, yeah, right. Anyone. That's the end of the reason. Tall or short, guys? Tall. What do you consider tall? 
um, six foot and other. Why not short guys? <laughs> I like funny niggas that Listen, give money oh, six on, foot. On, lot of, on, I like a scammer. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Just take a look at how these women openly humiliate this short man. I'm sorry, but you know, you know, <laughs> pass. <laughs> I almost feel bad. I'm pass. <laughs> I'm sorry. You seem really nice though. We could chill. I still pass. <laughs> no, I pass. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. It's the height, but we could be I friends. Mean, we could, you know, we could kick it, you know. Let him guess. <laughs> Get the. F <laughs> Get the. F <laughs> it's okay. You're not ugly, but you just, you know. Really I'm already short myself. You feel me? Okay. I'm gonna pass. <laughs> um. Uh, if you was taller, I would smash. But you short, so I'm gonna pass. <laughs> Smash for sure. Pass. Okay. Oh. What's crazy is that women are allowed to do that without showing any remorse and without anybody telling them they're wrong for doing that. Now, take into consideration if this was my group of friends and there was a fat woman lined up, right? If there was a fat woman lined up there and I just looked at her and every time everybody walked by, we looked at her, we laughed in her face and said, nah, I can't date you. You too fat. I need people to see me when you standing in front of me. Uh, I don't want people to have to look around you to get to me. How would that roll over? You would be a bigot, right? You'd be called fat phobic. And the truth of the matter is all of these words are made up just to make sure that men have no standards. If you don't like fat women, you're fat phobic. If you don't like women that have been around the block, you are a slut shamer. If you don't like, if you don't like trans women, you're considered a person that you're, you're considered transphobic. Right? So all of these things are just used to make sure that men do not have standards because if men continue to have standards, this whole system falls. If you want to talk about what women don't accept aesthetically, they don't accept short men. Largely. They don't? No. Are you so kidding how, me? Absolutely Kayla, not. Did you date a short man? I did. Are you, are you serious right now, Kay? She, Kay did you date a short man, mind. but she isn't with him now. Okay. Yeah. Kay. Generally. No, like, I understand he, that in he, general, he, he wasn't like my type. I he was understand. A really good friend. Hey, did you know that if a man is five four, nah, okay. he will be he will be rejected ninety percent of the time, regardless of any other uh, factor in his life? Do you know that? I can ninety percent of the time, if a man is five, like four, I just said, he will be rejected. I can believe it. Short men have it bad everywhere. They do. This is not just America. Everywhere. I don't want to. I don't want them. This is everywhere. That, <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm just you saying, they're not my friends. And that's the no, thing. Jonathan, you heard, you heard, I get you heard that. what she just said. I she don't want them, and she can openly say that without any con I'm without five, anybody bothering her, without anybody calling her short phobic or height phobic. There's no word for that. Or the likelihood of a short guy getting with a taller woman would have had to be a situation like mine where you met in a different space and you got to know this person and y'all found out y'all was compatible and they were in the face physically attractive and that just happened. But if you're out at the club, like if he, if my ex was tried to start that relationship by like meeting me out somewhere, that would have never happened. Thanks. It happened because we worked together. We were coworkers. We ran a department together and we were together all the time. And he was a good person and funny and thoughtful and he pursued me, you know what I'm saying? So that's totally, that was a specialized situation and I haven't yeah. dated anybody that height since then. <laughs> that that height. And what's very interesting about that is all of those standards only apply to men that are not physically attractive and height does play a role in that. Now, if that man was physically attractive, he wouldn't have had to pursue. He wouldn't Poor have had to go and be nice to you and do all these different things. If Poor he was man, already he attractive, women. those standards only exist for men that are not attractive. And it's true, women have higher standards and are more picky than ever before. In fact, 30% of men by the age of 30 in 2021 will be virgins. Okay, this is not including the men that maybe had one experience on a lucky night. We're talking about 30% of men will be virgins at the age of 30 years old. So yes, women are definitely more picky and have higher standards. But are those standards targeted towards the right things? Uh, if you're choosing men based on height and attractiveness, I would argue not. It doesn't matter if my standards are high if I'm looking for a wide receiver. If I'm judging my wide receivers based on their ability to throw an accurate pass, that's not a good standard. My standards are high, but it doesn't mean that those standards are targeted towards the right things. And some people may say, well, that's just a male problem. Short men or unattractive men just have to be better. No, this is not just a male problem. Regardless of what you see on social media, 
One in five women, more than ever before, one in five, 20% of women are on antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication. Women are not happy. More women than ever before are single mothers, and single mothers are the poorest demographic in America. Regardless of all this boss babe fantasy, single mothers are the poorest demographic in America. Historically speaking, when women depended on men and not the government, women wouldn't want to become single mothers because they understood that it was almost a death sentence. Nowadays, when we have welfare programs and child support, women are much more likely to date men based on lustful desires instead of his actual characteristics based on his personality. If you're a man in 2021 and you're just short or unattractive, try to change the things that you can change. If your teeth are crooked, go and get braces and try to get them whitened if you can afford it. If you don't know how to dress well, try to dress better and smell good. If you're fat or too skinny, if you fat, that's a death sentence. You got to do something. You got to do something about it. Some women prefer skinnier men, so they have a little niche, but try to be uh, get yourself to a muscular V-shaped frame. These are all things that are gonna help you appear to be more attractive to women in 2021. And for us to turn this thing around as men, it will require us to have standards no matter how desperate we are for sexual attention. That means if you are not attracted to big women, key words, if you are not attracted to big women, don't go and date big women because you want to compromise, because they would not do it for you. If you are not attracted to single mothers and if you do not have kids yourself, don't go out and date a single mother because it will show the next generation of women that they can go out and have children by that top 10% of men and nothing will change for them because there will be some simp that will settle with them. Now, I don't believe that men are actually strong and actually are going to stand up for their standards. I don't believe that men have integrity sexually. So my predictions for the future are pretty grim. I think more women are going to be on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications than ever before. I think that more women are going to become single mothers. I think that fewer men are going to have sex before the age of 30. I believe that number is going to go all the way up to probably around 50% in the next 10 years. These are just my predictions, by the way. But I couldn't see it getting any better if men cannot control their sexual standards till next time my boo my boo i'm just here for the rendezvous and i ain't the whole damn group because i've been feeling like you want me to he say stop standing so uh, i can't on myself when i poke up